This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Hello there. Something that I knew since the beginning that I wanted to have in Kitchen Tales is support for local multiplayer. So, Kitchen Tales has some modes. One of them is an arcade arena where you play against mobs and bosses. And I wanted the both players to play together to defeat these enemies. So the major concern when we talk about local multiplayer is how we will handle inputs, right? Because both players will have to interact with the system and they will probably use different inputs because it's very hard to have two players using the same inputs and basically just doing different things. So let's say uh, one player will use the up arrow and we can use the same up arrow for the other player to interact with the system, right? They can both be pressing the same thing. Godot provides us a very, very cool system to deal with that. In Godot Engine, we have what we call an input map, and this input map works as follows. You can name an action, so let's say jump, and you can add a list of inputs that will trigger this action. So let's say jump, and the jump can, can be the space bar, can be the up arrow, can be the W arrow, buttons from the joystick or something like that. Once you have all these listed, you can check only for the action instead of checking for all the events that you have, all the events that could trigger this action. But if we are using the same action, even if we have different inputs, so let's say the, the jump action is built up of three input events. It can be the space bar, it can be the first joystick button uh, up arrow, and it can be the second joystick button up arrow. So we have two joysticks and both will trigger the jump action. But the major problem with that is, is that since they will both be checking for the same action, so the jump action, if we have two objects with a, a check for the jump action, both will jump if the first player, for instance, press jump. So if we press like the space bar, both players, both characters will jump because we are checking for the same input action. So the way that we can work with that is that we can create two different actions, so jump on the line 1 and jump on the line 2, for instance. And in the logic of the player, instead of having a constant check, so instead of having a string with the name of the action that we want to, to check, instead we have a variable that we can change depending on which player we are dealing with. So, let's see how I did that in Kitchen Tales because I think that the system that I created is a very cool and very flexible one. So, let's check this out. So, here I have two characters, which is the first player and the second player. One I am pressing the keyboard arrows to move and the other one I am moving with the joystick. So, this is what we are going to achieve at the end of this video because I want to explain to you how did I achieve that with the system that I created, with the architecture that I created. So, the first thing that we have to understand to get why did I made this implementation is to get to the project, project settings input map. So, we have here the first player, so the player one action, so left, right, up and down, so on and so forth, and then we have the actions for the second player so player two uh, left under underscore two right underscore two and so on and so forth so we have kind of like indexing characters right but what happened how do you actually check for these input actions so let's go to the player scene and you can see that here i have the controls node this is what represents the control of the player so as if i was abstracting this physical thing inside the player scene. So we have here the left, right, jump, and so on and so forth actions. And how do we check for actions in Godot Engine? Well, we can, we can use the unhandle input method, right? Or we, we can use the input class as well. So let's open these. These are actually the, the building blocks of the system. This is the thing that will hold this system together. So if I open the script, you can see that on the unhandled input method, at the very bottom, so if this event passes through all these checks here, at the very bottom, we have a check for if this is an action. So if this is a specific action. Very often, what we have is something like this. Is action pressed and let's say jump. Something like this. But the question and the major problem with that approach is, 
how we will you change this value if we are dealing with two players or, or, or more players? So you would have a check, of course, for the first player input. But what about the second player? For the second player, you would have, you need to have something like this. But you would then have two scripts because this is a constant check. This is a check for a constant value. You are not using a variable for that. So you can't change that in runtime. But with a variable, you can check that at any time and you can change the value of this variable at any time. So this action variable here is what I use to store the value of the action that I wanted to check with and whenever with whatever script or with whatever instance of this class, so with whatever object. After that, we have the handle input, which basically just check for okay, this handle is being uh, hand this input is being handled, and this was pressed or this was released, and then we have the is holding method, which basically can be used with other classes to say okay, is this action that you represent being held, and it can return true or false depending on whether this input it, this action is being hold, so it's been held actually. So it will check for that and it will also emit a signal telling that this action is pressed if this is true. And basically that's it. So since this action is a variable, this, this action that this class should check is a variable, I can also export this to the scene file. So instead of having a, the, the value being changed in runtime, I can change the value right when I am designed the scene. So if we go back to the scene here, you can see that the left action node has the left value in the action variable, the right one has the right value, so on and so forth. And if we go back to the combat playground, which is what I used to test uh, the, the combat system of Kitchen Tales, I have a second player character. So I have one on the left, so this is the first player char character. And this is the second player character. And what I did to have this support for mood player is basically that I appended a underscore with the two, so with the index two, for the actions of the second player. So instead of having uh, left, I have left underscore two. And with that, if we play the scene, yeah. So if we test that now, since one is being checked for the player, for the player one inputs and the other one is checking for the player two so now we have the proper mood player the local mood player uh, input handling being done first so this is very cool i wish i have someone to play with me smash that like if you don't have friends to play test your mood player games <laughs> so that's it that was how i implemented the local multiplayer support in kitchen tales if you want to get this exact implementation that I just showed you, I will put a link in the description and also in the pilot comment for the Kitchen Tales GitHub repository, so you can go there and check out the implementation. Don't forget to turn on the notifications for the project and also to restart the repository, please. And don't forget to follow me on itch.io as well, because I will post some devlogs there. When I release some content of the game, I will release that as well, so you can get updates about the project. A big shout out to Tilikan, Leslie Sultani and Jack for joining me in my patronage. Thank you so much for joining me guys, I really appreciate your support. So that's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing and until the next time.